Parker was 10 weeks old when he was diagnosed with neuroblastoma. He had um, high risk stage four cancer. He had it in his bone marrow. He had tumors on both adrenal glands. He had it in his bone. He had a large mass between his heart and his spinal cord, and he had it in his skin too. And that's how we found it. He um, had a rash that we went to the doctor for, and they immediately sent us to Children's, and we were diagnosed within probably an hour of getting to Children's Hospital. I started Cancer Free Kids along with the rest of my family because my daughter was diagnosed with cancer at five months old. And when we discovered that she had cancer in both of her eyes, um, we started asking questions of the researchers and the doctors that we were dealing with, just saying, where are we in this war on cancer and why are we not winning it? When we finally got her to the point where she was well and we knew that she was going to live, we just started looking for an organization to volunteer with and say, hey, we'll help. We really want to raise money for research for other families so they don't have to go through what we've gone through and, and worse. And we couldn't find anybody that was raising money specifically for pediatric cancer research, which we were shocked, especially when we found out that more children die of cancer than any other disease in our country. About 60% of the funding that we give to Cincinnati Children's comes from events that other people host for us and that we just support them sort of behind the scenes. Cincinnati Children's Hospital is one of the top three pediatric cancer research hospitals in the country. There's lots of ways that people help at Cancer Free Kids and it varies from being extremely engaged as a board member, uh, running an event that benefits us. My name's Paul Cole, I'm seven years old. I think you should help cancer free kids because it can help people not have cancer anymore. The great ideas and the great new discoveries that are going to move the field forward are very fragile. It allows people to take really well thought out risks in their research by crossing disciplines and taking a leap. And that's where a par strong partner, you know, Cancer Free Kids, really steps right in. Not only allows it, but encourages us to do those types of developments. And, and some of the biggest advances uh, have come from that type of seed project funded by Cancer Free Kids. First one, we, we got it from Cancer Free Kids. And, and the very critical in order to consequently get a more grant from a big institution like NIH. We have a lot of uh, appreciation, not just from myself and also from a variety of different oncologists, continuously getting support from cancer-free kids. They, they contribute a lot, a lot to the cancer oncology field. He started chemo, a intense research protocol, seven days later. Honestly, I don't know if we'd be standing here today without them. The research they do is life-saving, and that protocol saved his life. Pediatric research is important, the funding is important on so many levels because a lot of the ther therapies they do for children also actually end up helping adults uh, and it's just an opportunity to really focus on coming up with new therapies that will help more kids. We talked to his oncologist just last week in an event and she was telling us about new and exciting therapies that were made available because of the funding from Cancer Free Kids, which was really exciting to know that that money was going to something that was giving another family a chance we had for their child to be healthy. The most important thing that we do is put the research dollars in the hands of the doctors and researchers that are looking for a cure. We give every dollar that we raise in the hands of a researcher who has potential for a cure. So the most important thing that people can do today is to make a donation that will turn into research dollars and hopefully a cure.